Welcome everyone, good afternoon and welcome to Match Day Minus One, the second edition, our weekly preview of Austin FC's next game here from HQ in St. David's. It is presented by PointsBet, founding partner of Austin FC. We are live on Twitter and Facebook. You can also catch a recording of this later on today on YouTube. We are Adrian Healy and Michael LaHood. Welcome, Michael. Good to have you uh, in the uh, in HQ here, the nerve centre of operations. Uh, we thought what we do each week is kind of provide a structure to the show. We'll start with what we're going to call the after party, a quick look back at last week. And obviously, Michael, a perfect start for Austin with the 5-0 demolition job of, uh, of FC Cincinnati. How does that yeah. feel a few days on? I still got champagne in my hair from the after party after that game. It's just five goals to kickstart a season. That's an attention grabber. You want to know how you maintain attention your way? You get another stellar performance this weekend. Couldn't really have been scripted any better, could it? Uh, and and one, of the, one of the things that really caught the eye was uh, how – the designated players perform. We'll come on to that in, yep. the, in the segment we call the stars. But before we get to the stars, we have to give a shout out to the crowd once again. I, you know, we we've been at every game yeah. at, <laughs> at, at, at Q Two Stadiums is open. This was one of the loudest I've ever heard the crowd for the opening game of season two in forty degrees in the yeah. rain. They brought it. There's something I'm noticing about rain, cold weather, the city of Austin, and soccer. Austin. <laughs> turns up and they show out and they did in that match i mean just to be rewarded that first goal is i know we're going to break down the game yeah. in segments but when you're a fan to be in the stands and you see a goal go in in two minutes that sets the tone for a big party mm. well they scored early against cincinnati just as they'd done in the last game of the uh, season number one against kansas city that goal after 30 seconds let's talk about the stars mm. of the game first game where all three designated players have scored. Uh, give us your thoughts on Drew. To my mind, yeah. Michael, Drew looked like the best player on the pitch, and it wasn't even close. It, it yeah. was by a country mile he was the best player on the pitch. Well, he had to earn his space because we talked about it during the match. In the first couple minutes, he was getting – clobbered by Cincinnati defenders and players. I think Jeff Cameron clobbered him. Driussi did have the last yeah. laugh on the fourth goal, the assist to Cecilio Dominguez. But elegance personified. I said it in the pregame show, he is world-class, folks. And mm. I don't use that word often. I don't use that word lightly. His reputation and pedigree and resume speaks for itself. And now he's bringing that to Major League Soccer. And Cecilio Dominguez, two goals. Third time in his Austin career, yep. he scored a brace. Uh, there's only been four braces in, in Austin FC history. Dominguez has three of them. Man of the match performance. Yep. More confident, more dangerous, more relaxed. Is that fair to say? Just more quality mm. in the final third. And, and Cecilio is such a talented player, but that confidence in the final third showed that first goal, that is not an easy finish. Just to have that cushioned touch mm. to put that in, especially when it zips on the ground, John Komenich, trademark left foot, to pump that in the box and then it skids off the turf, wet turf, and he sides foot that foots that in. That's difficult through traffic. And then the second goal, those are so easy to miss. He had missed the one before. Mm. So to have the determination and the focus to finish that play, kudos to him and team of the week honors. And first look at the new position and role for Alex Ring. Big thumbs up, I would I would suggest. I you and I are both fans of the ringleader. He's he's the skip. I'm not going to yeah. say of the ship. Fine. <laughs> I'll say of you the ship. You can say the ship. Okay, the skip of the ship for a reason. But he looks free playing in that more advanced midfield role. And I, I love just the verticality with yeah. his runs out of midfield that he gives. And he's a threat in the box. He, he just continues his goal-scoring form from last season. Give me your unsung hero from mm. week one. We'll try and do this each week. A player that perhaps... Yeah, fl flies a little bit under the radar, but but really uh, delivered the goods. As a former defensive midfielder when I played, I'm <laughs> biased towards my defensive midfielders. Uh, one young Danny Pereira. Yeah. The, the young Venezuelan is just class for 90 minutes. He was composed. And what I liked about him is you see the maturation process. He took responsibility going up against Luciano Acosta, mm -hmm. one of the more dangerous attacking midfielders from FC Cincinnati. And Acosta had a couple moments of danger, but he was very quiet 
for the duration of 90 minutes. Yeah. You can't give it to a defensive midfielder every week. Michael. No, you you're know, unsung I, heroes. Like, like Pereira <laughs> and Valencia, you're just going to be alternating uh, between you, the two. Uh, you got me. You got me. I'm found out. Uh, right. Let's move on to uh, tomorrow's action uh, and, and a little thing we'll call the enemy, our preview of who Austin uh, are pre are playing Match day two into Miami FC. What a an interesting story they are, Michael. What a uh, what a pattern they have weaved through their first two years and into their third year of the league. I mean, talk about a team that have kind of <laughs> knocked down the house yeah. and and almost tried to totally rebuild it this year. Uh, what do you see when you look at the uh, the men from Miami? I see a team that's searching for its identity. Yep. I think it's a team that's really trying to stop the defensive mishaps of last season they play a five in the back in attack it becomes a three five two defensively it comes a five three two they sit very deep typically leaving Gonzalo Higuain and the newcomer Campana mm. up top as the two strikers and try and hit you on the counter yeah last season they tried to play a bit more going through the middle with Blaise Matuidi didn't quite work out for him in Miami. This season, it's Route 1 football. Gonzalo Higuain has changed his number, and he's gone from 9 to 10, and he's changing how he plays. He's more of the quarterback yeah. of this team, the guy who's going to drop in almost as a second striker and try and play make, springing in Campana, springing in DeAndre Yedlin, which is – I don't know about you, is it – it's so weird to see I, him is. in different colors. It is, yeah. So used to seeing him in uh, in rave green early on in his career. But Yedlin will be someone they have to watch, obviously. Yeah. But as you said, so eloquent, they're a team who have changed their spots. I mean, when we look at the uh, the Lahoud mood, Oof. give us give us your Lahoud mood and the and the keys to the game, Michael. Yeah, you you've already said it. I mean, this is a team who are coming here, maybe to put nine men behind the ball tomorrow. I believe they're fully coming here to fr try and frustrate Austin FC. And w when you ask me, I thought you would never ask the temperature <laughs> of the Lahoud mood. I'm in a five-star mood, Adrian. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just, I'm still buzzing over those five goals. I know it's a new opponent, but just the offensive prowess of Austin FC and just being able to flex your muscles in that first game, it just it makes me chomping at the bit to see them take on a new opponent and mm. and really break down a defensive team mm. first to win this game they are going to have to create numerical advantages yeah. out wide that's typically where the space is yeah. especially when inter miami drop to a back five deandre yedlin and allen they push up a lot in attack and that's going to lead to the second point defensive transition inter miami they are not the best team at defensive transition. Yep. Chicago, a lot of their chances came off of defensive transition. Lacks passing, lapse of concentration. They don't do well in interchanging uh, you know, players that come mm -hmm. from Austin FC's midfield and attack, and they fall asleep. So Driussi can unlock the defense. And lastly, just like I said, Sebastian Driussi unlocks Sebastian Driussi against the back five. Yeah. Get him going early and often. If you do that, you have a great chance of winning this game. That back three, the the three central defenders, Michael, are they? Is that a, is that a potential point of weakness? Can Austin exploit Quinteros, Lowe, and McVeigh? Is that back three? I think Lowe is going to be the key player to yeah. exploit. He's so aggressive. Watched him play for the Jamaican national team. Been kicked by him a bazillion times <laughs> through my career, so I, I wince when I see yeah, him. Yeah, he's a player that's kind of had a cup of tea several times in MLS, yeah. and this keeps on coming back, doesn't he? But yeah, and he, he's he's a player that's so yeah. aggressive. He's physically gifted, but he's a player that could get you a red card in the blink of an eye because right. he steps up so high, and that back three is so disjointed yeah. between the three center backs. Yeah. So runs from midfield, runs from deep. I think Alex Ring or Sebastian Driussi – checking off the shoulder of Gregory, the defensive midfielder, and making that run in beyond that back three, that could be a point of weakness. I think I think this is the game where Maxi Arudi can mm. really a announce his arrival Ooh. in Austin. I mean, he, he was unlucky not to be on the score sheet last week, both in terms of scoring or an assist, but yeah. just I think Drusi and Arudi must be licking their lips looking at this. Oh, oh they, Hopefully they brew a special cup of mate <laughs> for that game. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, okay, one great stat. We will do that. We'll bring you uh, something to look forward for uh, from tomorrow's game. Actually, I'll, 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 I'll sort of break with the format and bring you two great stats. Um, one on a player level, Diego Fagundes, uh, who we think will get the start tomorrow, uh, will be playing for the 300th time in his MLS career in playoffs and regular season. He will be wow. by far the youngest player to reach that, that mark. And he'll beat the record. He'll smash it by two and a half years. Justin Mapp 
was the previous wow. youngest holder of that. So, so uh, hat tip to Diego Fagundes uh, if he gets the nod tomorrow. Um, and another stat building into this sort of theme of Austin moving on from year one, Michael, is can they follow up a win with another win? Yeah. It's something we just couldn't do last year. In fact, the last eight times Austin won a game, they didn't get a single point for the following game. Didn't even get a draw. You have to go back to the first the first two road wins for a, a win that was followed up by another win. So this, to me, is a huge psychological statement. If Austin can win for a second time in a row at home tomorrow and follow up the win against Cincinnati. Well, before I go to the keyword I'm thinking of, when you mentioned that stat, I want to pay homage to Diego Fagundes. We talked to him before the show, and just he has a knack for stepping yeah. up for the big moment. Last time he was on a milestone moment, he delivered in the assist column. This time, I'm expecting good things and just solid guy, great acquisition for the Verde yeah. and Black. And you're pointing at the other point, momentum. Yeah. This is a great game and a great opportunity against an opponent to build momentum off of week one and yeah. carry that into week two. Because after this game, you come up against Portland. You need momentum going to the Rose City. Yeah. Okay, uh, a moment of gratitude. We'd like to do this every week, uh, highlighting someone within the Austin FC community that we're uh, we're thankful for. We have to highlight the man between the sticks this week, yeah. uh, Michael Brad Stuver, who's going to be, uh, you know, first of all, he was a finalist for MLS's Humanitarian of the Year Award. He's going to be a featured speaker in South by Southwest, which is almost upon us. Kicks off next week. Uh, you will be with him. Uh, he's going to be talking uh, to you Um Athlete activism using sport for social good is the title of the uh, the panel. And just give us your thoughts on being on stage with with Brad. That will be Monday the 14th, I believe, of, of March. Yeah. What an honor it is to be alongside Brad at South by Southwest. Austin is known for many things, art, music, yeah. movies, and, of course, soccer, the world's game. But to see a player like Brad – who is not just using his voice on the field in leadership, but using his voice for social change and social good in the city of Austin is incredible. What an asset and a club ambassador and a flag bearer, not just for the club, but for the city and really for the love or for the world. Yeah. That, by the way, if you're interested in going, is Monday, March the 14th uh, at Ballroom AB at the Four Seasons. You don't mess around. Four Seasons for Mr. LaHood. I, well, the, mood, the mood's about to get <laughs> elevated for that. But, yeah, that's going to be fantastic. And and so excited to have South by Southwest almost here. I got, I've got my wristband ready to go for the music side of it, but <laughs> going to be definitely there on, on that day as well. Uh, so uh, that just about does it for us today. We, we like to keep these short, sharp, and sweet. Uh, match day minus one. Uh, Michael, final thoughts as we look at another sellout tomorrow. Austin yeah. uh, will have the longest uh, streak of home sellouts continue tomorrow. Um, we, we expect the atmosphere is going to be nothing less than raucous once again. Yeah. Three o'clock Sunday afternoon kickoff on national TV. Austin's first national game of the year. A guy that I want to give a shout-out to, and especially the shout-out will be growing, you have to give a shout-out to Josh Wolf and his staff. Yeah. I think what they've done, what they've stuck with, they've stuck with the plan. They've gone out and gotten some of the missing pieces that weren't there last year, and now they get a chance to showcase what they're building on the national stage. Primetime ESPN. 3 o'clock, Sunday afternoon. Only the third ever visitors uh, from the Eastern Conference to Q2, the second in a row. Can Austin keep the good vibes going? Hope you'll tune in. Hope you've enjoyed this Match Day Minus One show, and we'll be back next week.